What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Engineers Up Filters podcast, episode 131. I am your host, Jacob Thompson, and tonight I'm drinking another Yingling Flight. We still never figured out what makes the flight different from regular Yingling, but it's uh, it's pretty tasty, so I'm still drinking. Can't, can't complain about that. Uh, I'm Joseph, and I'm drinking Falling Knife Brewery's Verbal Tip. Is a hazy IPA with mosaic and citra hops. Like uh, can. Yeah, it's a sticker, and I don't know. I don't know if this is picking up on my camera, but the logo is like a separate sticker, oh. so I think they can just replace it very easily, or like I don't know, put it on different things or whatever. It's really weird, um, but it's a local Minneapolis brewery. It's actually down the road from here, and we've never been so. That's What's the name cool. again? Uh, Falling Knife. Oh, yeah, it's off Broadway. Heard of it. Yeah, that's the one. I don't know if you know, Jacob, like on Broadway towards 280 by like the Wendy's and like that. Yeah, you're trying to go park. to Wendy's. Yeah. Yeah, that garbage Wendy's. Like no, in, they just forget it. In North well, Minneapolis? I said, the last like, time I was, the every time I've been there, they've gotten my order wrong. Oh, they've got new people now. It's, <laughs> okay. it's top notch now. Uh, um, I would know. I go a lot. Like, just like, across the bridge in North Minneapolis? No, 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 no. The one closer the to 280. Way. Okay. So my memory of Minneapolis just faded over the, the last year. <laughs> the opposite direction. Um, okay. There was like, by, a... like, there's like that industrial park past from our apartment past the quarry if you stay on Broadway. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. By like yeah. that UPS. And there's that Costco. Yeah, over there. I have a. I think we went to that Wendy's one night. Might have been after... We were driving back from your from your place for Thanksgiving. I remember being in the car, the drive through for a Wendy's. I'm pretty sure it was a shitty one. And you were talking about how it was weird that uh, your girlfriend Alyssa was a teacher, and your sister Alyssa is a teacher. <laughs> you're trying to like tell your parents that or something. Yeah. I don't remember that, but <laughs> it sounds like a conversation I've had. Yes, many months ago. So, all right. Well, I'm Gabe, uh, and I apologize if you can hear the rain. And I'm in my audio right now because it is absolutely dumping buckets outside. And <laughs> the I old think... man is pissing. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he's been drinking a lot. I still haven't bought beer. I mean, it's probably been four episodes now. I still haven't bought beer, guys. So there's a couple beers left in my fridge from the Christmas gifts I got. For the oh the god. around the world beer box. Oh my box. god! <laughs> is it that fucking yeah, yeah. Fago shit? It is so gross. <laughs> <laughs> it, I can't pronounce it. Show it's German. It's supposed to be the German one. It's pomegranate flavored. It's extremely sweet and it's only three percent. I think the only thing this thing could give you is a headache <laughs> and a desire for a better beer. <laughs> That's my I, review. <laughs> pomegranate huh that is not a flavor that i see often it's in the alcohol not good market. not good <laughs> so that's where i'm at hmm. god damn and uh, the legend returns yeah and this is this is dayton for everybody that has long forgotten my voice um <laughs> and i'm drinking two roads cloud sourced ipa i've drank it before pretty pretty uh pretty classic this one the last time i drank it is from the same six pack which is probably like from like two months ago um yeah. Yep. Hey, you've been gone. You know, it's fine. I have been gone. Do. It's been like Which three we weeks. Talk about in just a minute. But before that, welcome back to the podcast, everyone. As always, you can find our show on podcast services and YouTube every Monday morning. You can also follow us on Instagram at EWF Podcast. And also, please follow us on Twitch, the EWF underscore podcast, where we're live on Mondays and Thursdays, or we're gaming or podcasting. So come check us out. Um, We'll start off with weekly updates, and we'll do Dayton last, because we'll just snowball that into the hour I'll recap. But, Joseph, anything happen for you this week? Um, Not me directly. I I guess I could have mentioned this last... Did I mention it last time? My sister had her baby recently. Oh. I don't think I mentioned it. You didn't. Um, I'm sorry. 
Uh, I just met her for the first quote, met her Snapchat video of her for the first time today. So it's, it's on my mind. Um, but I have a new niece. Um, so uh, it's Calvin's little sister. So he has two younger sisters now. And uh, she's doing well. Mom's doing well. So awesome. overall, pretty excited. Um, also, again, not directly. This is just part of me talking with my family. But they uh, harvested the hops today that my oh. dad grows. Mm. Um, and he's, they were saying that there were breweries there waiting to pick them up. So, it's so like local awesome. breweries. Um, I don't know, Dayton. I, well, Dayton, actually, I think we all went to Three Blondes mm -hmm. uh, yeah. while we were there. They were there to pick up some and another one um, that yeah. uses our uses our hops and actually our blueberries to make beer from time to time. So, uh, a couple local breweries there. Uh, so, that was pretty cool. Um, as for me personally, um, it was Alyssa's birthday uh, last Friday. So we celebrated nice. that, um, but that's that's kind of about it. Nothing, nothing too crazy in in my life. Well, I'll be honest. I didn't even know your sister was pregnant, <laughs> and I'm happy to hear it all. Yeah, well. <laughs> it's not something I really talk about that much. But as soon as you said, I'm like, which sister was it? I, and I guess wrong. I'm gonna be honest. I guess wrong. <laughs> uh, Gabe, what about you? Ah uh, man, a lot of a lot of work change. Really, honestly. Uh, we got a bunch of new people in the office. We got a whole new half of the building opened up. So Monday morning, they're like, you're helping all the new guys move in. And that was so much social interaction. I'm still tapped out. <laughs> uh, just so many new people. To, and I mean, they're all art my age because it's a software company, but a lot. I had my review. Uh, that went super well. I got a promotion and a raise. Nice. Oh, hell yeah. Pretty sick. For you. Uh... Also, I got a new desk because of everyone moving around. So I now have actual drawers. I think we were talking about that before. Um, what else? Oh, I've been... Is it a standing desk? I can't remember. No, no. So before I was in like a hotel desk just to spread us all out, which is just like people who pop in for like a day or whatever. Mm -hmm. I was in that for a year. <laughs> so <laughs> wasn't a lot of storage space. And this new place is, our new desk is pretty nice and... A lot closer to other people it feels like i'm actually working at a company which is interesting uh got to do a couple mountain biking rides before the the actual rain uh i almost hit a deer a couple days ago yesterday i almost hit some turkeys uh driving or biking biking oh like what whip around the corner there's just like turkeys in the trail i just almost smoked one so hard <laughs> <laughs> it was going early this year <laughs> yeah that's what i was thinking and then i got fucking stung like a, a hornet or something stung my left arm and my dumb fucking monkey brain was like swat it away with your right arm and take your left arm off the handlebars too <laughs> which meant there was approximately zero hands on my handlebars so i went over the bars that felt good still feeling that a little bit this morning but besides that not, not anything crazy we got another big trip coming up next week but i'm sure we'll debrief you when that happens where's that going back to northern minnesota in the inferior grand rapids minnesota mm. versus grand rapids uh michigan so yeah, should so be fun um on my end i i don't got much Class has started this week. Um, this should be my best semester as far as classes. I actually like my professors, and I think the content will be interesting. Um, but what I was not ready for, which I mentioned a little bit last week, is Purdue's back to full capacity. There are 55,000 people on campus, and Jesus fucking Christ walking around during passing time is a nightmare. Um, it's hot. And there's just a shit ton of people and undergrads, and it's just a lot. Like I don't have to talk to them, and I'm I'm overwhelmed by just the amount of people, and mm -hmm. almost get hit by bikes and shit. And oh my it, god, it's a lot. I know it's not exactly the same thing, but even like Monday when I had like everybody come back like full force, it's just like holy shit. Not yeah. used to like crowd. I guess I've been to like a couple concerts since you know since everything kind of started to slowly come back to normal, but it's still like. It's overwhelming a little bit. Yeah. And thankfully, so we still have the max mask mandate for indoor spaces at Purdue, and we're at 80% are fully vaccinated, which is pretty good. 
but that's still 11,000 people that aren't fully vaccinated, which is feels like a lot. Um, so hopefully people will get vaccinated soon, um, but they can't force it. So anyway. Um, can't they one... force it now because Pfizer was FDA approved? I believe so. Maybe. They might change I, their plans. That might just be Pfizer, though. I don't know if they can do the others. Yeah, I think yeah. they could only only force that one, but I think I think they can. Like, yeah, because I mean, it's kindergartens no different. Do. I mean, kindergartens do for like uh, various other vaccines that are FDA approved. Elizabeth yeah, pretty already saying, has those. Her freshman year, she needed her vaccination record to sign up for classes, like yeah. freshman year of college. I did that. Yeah, I needed the same thing for Purdue. So I mean, hopefully, Joseph. Hopefully, I mean, and we have a vaccination site on campus, and the deal is, if you're not fully vaccinated, you have to get COVID tested every single week. So that annoyance. <laughs> should grade on people um uh and now it's fda approved hopefully that you know will get better but one thing that's definitely different from purdue comparing to michigan tech with passing time is like michigan tech is a very like the campus is in one spot and there's only really one road that people would ever have to like cross you know mm-hmm. but purdue is a very large campus so there's a bunch of roads you know intertwined in it and during passing time if there's a four-way stop where there's not a stoplight it's a stop sign those cars aren't moving because the kids <laughs> will just keep walking. And like the only way cars will ever move if they uh, like try to nudge in the intersection and then, you know, just force the kids <laughs> out of the way. But I feel so bad for these cars that are just like trying to go. And you can tell some people who are driving like aren't super comfortable. They don't have like have the balls to really like push it. Um, so, yeah, that's been interesting. I'm <laughs> glad I'm not really have to drive during passing time, but. Well, Michigan Tech was weird too because it's one of the few campuses where the people, the pedestrians, don't have the right of way on streets that go through campus. Yeah, like that, most that's college campuses. A highway. Yeah, you can just walk through. Like you can just cross the street at any point, and the car will has to stop for you. Like that's yeah. just the way it is. You know, like downstate Michigan. I know where my sisters went to school saying we we would just cross the street like not mm-hmm. barely even look like make sure there wasn't a car right there excuse me but like just yeah. kind of cross and obviously that's very different than michigan tech so yeah which i get but it's like there are people who are just straight not looking it's like okay you please look a little bit like mm-hmm. come on people like have they some consideration for the too, drivers man. oh dude they don't give a shit they're fucking watching tiktok i don't know but yeah, so that's been that's been interesting, just walking through campus, uh, and uh, this is the first time I've ever been on campus this big. So, yeah. But anyway, let's get to the big story date. And I don't know where you want to start. If you want to do this week and then go back to Al Royale or what? But I'll I'll give it over to you. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what the easiest, what the most like consistent way of doing it would be. And I think in the past for your weekly <clears throat> rep, we kept you've done it chronologically. To my yeah. Chagrin. Yeah, and I think I'll keep I'll keep with that. I'll do it chronologically. Okay. So, oh man, this is like a long time ago. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember <laughs> getting to Houghton. <laughs> yeah, so I, I remember I remember getting to Houghton. Uh, so, let's see. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Wait, <laughs> hang on a second. I think I know where you're going. <laughs> hang on a second. I think I, I might, no, nah, maybe I just told Joseph this. I don't know, I can't remember. Anyway, okay. So, I leave work on whatever it is, like Thursday, and... Wait, I think I definitely talked about my car, my car issues. Right? You told me. Yeah, your car, being, your car was fucked. We knew you had your friend had to give you a ride. Okay, okay, yes. So my friend gives me a ride uh, up to the airport at like 3 a.m. And yep. to get up there at like 4 a.m. And then for my flight that leaves at like 5.30 in the morning or maybe like 5.45. And get up there. The TSA airport line is the longest that I've ever seen it there. It's literally outside of all the little snaky things, and then it goes all the way to one of the exits, which is like probably like a solid like 200 meters or so, and then it jogs back another like 50 or 100, and it's just swamped with people, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I really hope I can actually get on this fucking flight. Um, and so I ended up getting through that, no problem. Like it, it was honestly going pretty quickly. Um, but I think I, I think I hinted at this maybe last time was that the friend, well, yeah, I'll just, I'll just leave it at the friend cause I don't want to disclose medical history or anything like that. The friend who was supposed to pick me up got diagnosed with COVID. Uh, this was the friend that was supposed to pick me up from Houghton. So they got diagnosed with, with COVID 
or yeah, whatever you want to call it. Uh, like they they got COVID, okay, and they couldn't pick me up. Uh, yeah. And so I was just like, oh my gosh, like my life is fucking falling apart. First, my car is like <laughs> busted as fuck, and it's in the shop, and I can't drive myself there. And now my now my friend can't pick me up from the airport. But anyway, so luckily, uh, I I got into Houghton just fine. Uh, no issues, and then uh, one of our other good friends uh, who still lives up in Houghton was able to pick me up. Uh, so that that didn't end up, you know, being a big deal whatsoever. But it was still just like very stressful for me. Like those like two days before I left, I was like wanted to pull my fucking hair out. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so got up to Houghton, uh, just like walked around for a little bit until like Joseph and my dad got in uh, into Houghton, and then we. Was it that day that we went and we did the GLRC tour? I think it was. Yep. Yeah, so yep. the GLRC is the Great Lakes Research Center, and that's where I worked for three years. Yeah, three years uh, during college. Um, and, you know, know the guys there really well. Uh, had a great time there. And I just wanted to show my dad uh, sort of, like, what sort of stuff they do there and, mm-hmm. like, what, like, I was doing there when I worked there, um, that sort of thing. So we got a tour from them. Uh, and and my, my old... Uh, I guess like supervisor, boss, I don't know what you really want to call him, because I was like an intern and he was like an engineer, but I worked under him. Uh, mm-hmm. He kept on calling me, what did he, did he call me, Hayden? Is it? Yeah, it was Hayden. I, yeah, he kept on, he kept <laughs> oh, on calling no. me Hayden. And I mean, he's he's a very like, just like frazzle brain guy. Uh, so like, I, I didn't take it personally. I just thought it was pretty funny. But <laughs> yeah, like we worked together for like three years and here he is calling me <laughs> Hayden. <laughs> And that's just, such like an engineer thing to do though it like is, it is i'm not surprised at all mm-hmm. yeah son you know that was that was great and then i think did, did, that night did we get drunk at the kbc yeah that was when we went to the yeah we went to the kbc and the dog and the yeah. dt yes yes so we went to all <laughs> we of those we started off on the right foot you could yeah. say yeah so then you know we we were we were properly properly drunk well joseph joseph was less drunk than i was because he was driving um mm-hmm. and my dad was staying up in calumet which is like i don't know like 20 minutes away from houghton uh up north mm-hmm. into the key went on and my dad was like oh yeah like you can you can stay at my at my place um you can just like sleep on the couch and then there's a spare bedroom there he had an airbnb and we mm-hmm. we like drive up there and you know my dad like gives me like the door code and everything like that so i'm like all right we're set we'll get in we'll get in no problem uh spoiler alert wrong uh <laughs> <laughs> so we, we get so, there. so your dad went home early i assume yes yeah so and we, you and we had were getting KBC. blasted yeah so they uh the, our other friends met us at the kbc they mm-hmm. got a, we got a couple more drinks and then we and yeah and then yeah joseph was able to drive and then you got up there at, yeah i'm assuming 2 a.m uh, it was 1 a.m., I think. Maybe midnight? Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Midnight, 1 a.m., something like that. It was about 1, I think. And we go we go up to the door, and I don't see, like, any, like, lockbox, any, like, anything, really. Like, and I'm just like, all right, this is kind of weird. So then I go, and I just try and open the door, and it's locked. And I'm just like, huh, this is really weird. Like, my dad didn't say anything about an exterior door, like, not having a lockbox or a code or anything like that, or that it being locked. And uh, his truck is right there. Yeah, like, so like his, he, his oh, truck no. is parked right next to the door. So oh, it's like, you know, it's the house. Yeah, yeah. It's, this is the right place. Yeah, so we know it's the right place, and like we just kind of start looking around. We're like looking under like plants and looking under like doormats and shit, trying to find a key, uh, <laughs> and, and no luck. And you know, I know that my dad's like been asleep for probably like three hours at this point. Uh, so I, I text him and don't hear back from him and then uh and then joseph and i are like all right well well joseph if you want to if you want to get your little dig in at me because i know that you want to do uh <laughs> you can you can input it right now i'm giving you so, permission so i'm like hey dayton worst case why don't you call him like you know he sometimes the text tone isn't enough but a ringtone is more sustained why don't, why don't you call him mm-hmm. maybe maybe that'll be enough to wake him up Mm-hmm. And Dayton's like, no, I know my dad. He'll sleep through it. It's fine. Mm-hmm. He's, if he didn't wake up to the text, he's not gonna wake up to the phone. Like, it's not gonna hurt to call. You're mm-hmm. Like, you're not wasting <laughs> minutes here. <laughs> but it's your dad. I'll I'll let you make this call. Like, yeah. I'll I'll trust you here. Yeah. Uh, so I did not choose to call him. 
<laughs> and Joseph and I just uh, decided to drive back down into Houghton and tried to crash at one of our friends' place. So we because when we left Houghton, they they're all like, "Are you sure you want to go back up? Mm -hmm. Like, we you can crash here. It's fine. We got couches. We got plate. Like, it's fine. It's cool." Mm -hmm. And we're like, "Oh no, we we'll just go back up. It's it's fine." Yeah. Uh. So we we get back into the into Houghton and I'm like and I call like both of them and no I think I called two of them and then I texted another one uh no answer from either of them because they were all just absolutely pissed drunk uh yeah. and <laughs> so then Joseph and I are like all right well shit like what do we do now <laughs> 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 meanwhile meanwhile at this point it's now like it's now past 1 a.m it was like and, 1 30 at this point yeah it was it was pretty late and like we're both just like dude we just want to sleep like, like were you guys leaving the next day for hour l no 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 no, no. Oh, okay um but then so how did we how did we come to the decision to sleep in the car <laughs> we were <laughs> so we're driving and i think i we, i just kind of drove up the hill towards walmart you're calling people nothing's happening mm -hmm. and i i don't know i we just turned in by like the mine shaft i think and we're like this is a dark parking lot mm -hmm. we're here yep let's just let's just sleep in the back of the car so <laughs> joseph, <laughs> cut our joseph, losses now <laughs> yep so joseph pulls in to the to the mine shaft right and it, this has all, all, our, of, all this... of our camping gear is in my car yeah, like yeah. all of our stuff is in my car mm -hmm. so including like, my, like like my check got... bag and everything so like yeah, yeah, but yeah. We, we've got sleeping bags we got you know our mm -hmm. mattress pads so it's like we have our stuff if there was yeah. ever a time you know if there's ever a time that, you had this to, yeah. is it yeah. yeah yeah like we're we're prepared but there's a lot of shit in joseph's car thanks to me uh so anyway, so like we start like rummaging around in the back, you know, again, this is 1.30 in a dark parking lot, uh, two dudes just rummaging around in the back of the car, like moving shit to like the front. And just as we're about to crawl into bed, this police I officer- I had a foot in the back of my car. I was yeah. like climbing in. <laughs> yeah. This police officer just rolls into the parking lot and I see him, I see him and I was like, there's no way that he's not going to pull into this, into this lot right now. And so he does, and I'm just like, all right, Joseph, just pretend that we're just rearranging shit in the back, get in, and just drive somewhere else calmly. <laughs> oh, my God. So, so, you know, we do that, and then we just, like, pull into, like, the hotel parking lot, like, right next to it, which had more light in it, but, like, also, like, they couldn't have done no anything. Gonna... Yeah. Uh, so then we end up crashing there for the night. You know, both both of us just slept like garbage. I slept better than Joseph did just because of pure sleep deprivation. At that point, <laughs> I was up for pretty much 24 hours. Uh, and mm -hmm. I was like, I literally don't care where I sleep. Um, <laughs> and, you know, we got up and, you know, everything kind of hurt in our bodies. <laughs> yeah. Bodies are... We're, we're not, uh, you know, adapted to sleeping in the back of a car. You know, the, the inside of it was just absolutely hot boxed. Um, <laughs> it was pretty, it was pretty disgusting. Um, it was steamy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but then what did we do the next day? I think we hiked out to Montreal Falls, right? Well, yeah, I, wanna, we, I need to hear about this interaction with Ralph that I'm sure you had. Well, yeah, except he's I like, what happened last well, night? Did we get we breakfast went with the, him? the, we went to Econo and got some skinny Pete's bagels oh, and yeah, the yeah, loaf yeah. of bread. And we ate breakfast on the way back up to Calumet. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah, that ma that makes a lot more sense then. Uh, yeah, so we, we drive up to Calumet, meet up with my dad. And my dad, I, I don't even know what he said to us. He was like, oh, you didn't make it make it up here last night, huh? And then Joseph and I are like, well, <laughs> we did. <laughs> um, but as it turns out, there was another, uh, like another like Airbnb unit like in like this little like complex thing that like my dad was like staying like in two oh. two separate apartments yeah basically um that use the same front kind of like a duplex yeah and the and like they were from they were from like illinois or something like that yeah they're definitely illinois plates and we think that they had been locking that door um like the exterior door uh at night because like they're just like not familiar with like the area like nothing's gonna fucking happen it's the up um mm. but yeah so that's why we so got Ralph, so your dad thought the door was unlocked when he went in and went well, to bed it was when it he was. got yeah. there else locked it. initially when he got there it was unlocked and there was only one key they only mm -hmm. gave him one key for or 
No, because it's a door code, so I don't even know. He didn't he even get a key. key. He just got the he just got the the door code. The yeah. door code. That's so shit, yeah. he could have gotten locked out. Yeah. Yeah. These other so. people. Okay. Did um, he say did he get the obligatory why didn't you call me? Yeah, he did. <laughs> he did. And I just looked at Dayton. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like I was like, well, you know what? Not everybody's perfect. <laughs> I make mistakes, damn it. <laughs> there you go. There um, goes. but yeah, so that that day, then we uh, we met up with some with some friends. Actually, two of the friends that we had uh, been drinking with the night prior went to Montreal Falls because uh, my dad had not been there yet. So we hiked out there. It's a nice like you know, well now that there's like a gate there, it's like probably like a two mile hike out. Um, right on Lake ate Michigan. Ate a bunch of thimbleberries. Ate a shit ton of thimbleberries. Um, nice. And swam in Lake Superior, uh, which is really nice. Really fucking cold. Um, mm-hmm. Always and is. Then, you got some leeches on you? Yeah, I got some leeches on me. Uh, were they as big as the ones from Isle Royal that you were picking off? Um, I didn't see the ones you had, but the oh. one that I had on, on Isle Royal was pretty sizable. Oh, okay. Yeah, these these Did were... they purge the evil from these you? These were kind of small. No. Oh. <laughs> uh yeah and then after that uh we went to carmelita's which is a southwestern mm-hmm. restaurant in, in calumet got some thimbleberry nice. margaritas because we obviously did not eat enough uh thimbleberries on the hike i think it was like right around peak thimbleberry season too yeah we it, it had to have been um and then yeah next morning we flew out for isle royal on the on the seaplane which was a fantastic no we didn't we had another day we in really? Houghton. Yeah, because we, we went to days. the Estevan Pines. Oh, holy shit, dude. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah, all right, Do you yeah. remember seeing the fallen giant, Yeah, Dayton? okay, okay. Well, I'm, I'm tired of talking, Joseph, so you, you chime in now. You tell the Estevan so, Pines story. So we went up to what's called the Estevan Pines. It's this old growth forest in the tip of the Keweenaw, past Copper Harbor. Okay. We were actually biking right next to it, or right around that area, um, when we were up there with Gabe and stuff. Uh, but it, yeah, it's this old growth forest that basically they they never got to or didn't log it. So mm-hmm. like the rest mm-hmm. of the Keweenaw has all been like forested twice over and replanted. Right. So like the trees are only so old, but these were older growth. But like I don't know, it's a pine tree. They only get so big. <laughs> um so there's this really like yeah there's like this little loop through the woods that's okay the map of it was not to scale at all it was not it was, accurate at all it was garbage <laughs> mm-hmm. but there's this thing called the fallen giant which is this massive pine tree that fell over however long ago and it says the trail there is unmaintained and it goes through a swamp and you have to cross a river and it says and like, only okay. for experienced hikers. Yeah. Um, and it's like this, it tells you, you know, what it is. And we're like, oh, that sounds cool. So luckily, Dayton had heard about it. He put it in his GPS watch. So he had the coordinates to it. So we start going. And yeah, there's a trail, but there's like trees that fell over and you got to kind of climb over them. It's like, yeah, that's pretty standard, but at least there's a trail. And then we got to the swamp and the trail just ended like mm-hmm. there was it, it it looked like a deer like a like a game trail mm-hmm. in a couple different parts and it's like is that is there traffic here because it's correct or is there traffic here because it's wrong and people have had to double back right. out of it <laughs> and it's like well it looks like there's footsteps going this way so you know we tried one way that didn't really work we gave up and then we went another way and we were like climbing over like fallen trees over like water like we didn't know how deep the water was Mm -hmm. and it's like this is fucking sketchy as shit how are we gonna find our way back eventually we make it found out that the first time we were what 20 feet from the end Nah, it wasn't quite 20 feet it was probably like closer to like 20 meters probably but Uh, still super close 20 yards 60 feet Mm -hmm. yeah whatever not we were very close to making it through the first time but whatever we make it through and like by that point there is no trail there is no semblance of a trail people have been going through this swamp eight different ways and they just kind of scatter there's nothing it is powered through like yeah this is the new trail And, and so it's like i guess 
uh, Dane's looking at his watch. We want to go that way, roughly. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we're just kind of walking. Oh, Sounds we, like a we, compass would have been more useful. <laughs> yeah, well, my watch does have a compass. But we yeah. veered we veered left too far you know gotta go around you know because there's shit gotta come to this river and it's like well i guess we're just walking across the walking through this river like mm-hmm. there's no down trees we can't even like look too far because like the forest is pretty thick get to it it's just a big ass tree that fell over like <laughs> <laughs> when it comes down to it it's it's just a single fallen tree mm. i don't know how it's pretty big though it was diameter was probably, was probably six feet in diameter maybe more six or yeah seven feet in diameter. at the base that's pretty big yeah for a pine big. tree that's massive yeah you know like there are species of trees that get way bigger than that but like for a pine tree it's pretty big and mm-hmm. it was hollow and burnt on the inside so we think it was struck by lightning and that's why it fell mm-hmm. over so it was pretty cool we got a couple pictures with it it was cool and then we're like all right <laughs> Guess we gotta go back <laughs> through the river and through the swamp. <laughs> and it's like, well, how did we? Do we want to fo- take the way we took to get there, or go a different way? And we stumbled our way back through it. Turned out we just went pretty much the first way that we right. tried. Just did that in reverse, yeah. and that worked mm-hmm. out. So we were kind of pissed that we doubled back and whatever. But it was overall cool. really fun. So unmaintained trail equals there is no trail. Yes. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> yes. Yep. Park readers don't want to deal with it, so oh, it's unmaintained. Just get in there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so that it was really cool. I mean, it, I think it was worth it to go. It was just kind of a pain, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun. That's a good, get a good story out of it. It's a, it's cool a thing that not many people have done, so it's yeah. it's cool. Yeah. yeah. And like at the end of the day, it's wet shoes and scrapes on your ankles like it wasn't right that bad so mm-hmm. now we finally get to the the main event right yes. yeah so now then we, we flew the... out to isle yes. royal so that morning you know we wake up and we're like itching to go out to isle royal and as we like are driving through calumet we're seeing like well, a lot hold of on. before that oh dayton and i crush an entire box of cinnamon toast crunch yeah for breakfast yeah. <laughs> and just absolutely housed it because my, so my we're dad, ready to go my dad was like oh hey let's just like eat oatmeal or something like that for breakfast and i'm like dad i'm gonna be real with you i'm gonna be eating oatmeal for six fucking days in a row <laughs> i'm gonna eat some damn sugar milk <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah we uh, get we get uh an entire box of cinnamon toast crunch and we just absolutely how house or whatever whatever the i think you should leave give me that one is like the you just send me a house that entire box of cereal (laughs) (laughs) um and yeah so then we drive out and it's really fucking foggy that morning and i was Mm -hmm. like man it's really not looking good that we're going to be able to get out of here uh in time Uh, so we you know calumet is a little bit higher up than houghton is so like we like drive down into houghton uh and like the fog isn't bad uh, we get in and we check in, and they're just like, "All right, uh, it looks like there's still a, like a pretty good amount of fog out at Windigo, which is like the ranger station that we were flying into uh, in Isle Royal." And they were just like, "All right, well, we're gonna have you delayed for like two hours, uh, so why don't you just like go somewhere around in like the Houghton Hancock area, and then we'll give you a call when like you're good to go." So we just go and we fuck off onto onto Shoots and Ladders, which is like a park right on right in the canal uh yep. i don't even i was playing pokemon at the park we kicked a rock back and forth yeah for we, we did hour. we did kick a rock that was fun uh <laughs> <laughs> um and then game and then, shakes his head <laughs> and then like i i go over and i like check my phone because it's charging and i'm like and i pick it up and i'm just like oh fuck like they just called me and like for some reason, like my my ringtone didn't go off. It didn't vibrate like my my watch or anything. And so then I call him back immediately, and I'm like, hey, like we're coming back like right now. Uh, and then we pretty much board. And I don't I don't even know like it was probably like well like ten minutes, but by the time we got there and when we took off probably. Yeah, um, it was like we got there, they weighed our bags, loaded them mm-hmm. up, and we got the spiel about like, don't fuck up. And then we got on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, and the plane ride was absolutely sick. It probably took like 30 minutes or so. Um, seeing like 
the Kiwana and also Isle Royal from the sky is just like so cool. Uh, and like we got some pictures, but like the pictures, like it's not That'd the same. Justice. It's not, it's yeah. not even close to being yeah. the same. Uh, but I would definitely recommend if anybody's gonna be going to Isle Royal, take take the seaplane. The boat just kind of sucks. Um, there was a little bit there because it was still pretty. Because it was fo- the the thing that they were worried about was landing in fog, not so much the takeoff mm-hmm. was fine. Mm-hmm. But it was the fog on Isle Royal that they were waiting to clear out. There was a good five ten minutes of the flight. You could not see anything. Mm-hmm. Like you could kind of see the ground below us, but like, I mean, granted, what do you like? I mean, most there's no flights that are really going back and forth that right. often, like in that airspace. Mm-hmm. But it's still like really eerie. Like, I can't see shit. The pilot is texting right now. Yeah, <laughs> and, and like this is cool, I guess. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, and then, you know, we land. The landing, smoothest airplane landing I have ever had. Okay? Like, I... Is that because of the seaplane? Do you think it's, like, a, a feature I, of seaplane? I think that it's probably a function of it being a seaplane, and then also the fact that the water was just, like, pretty calm, too. Because, mm-hmm. um, like, you know, like, when you land on, like, a regular, like, plane, you just, like, kind of, like, bounce? Yeah. And then, it, like, mm-hmm. it, it's never, like, smooth like butter, you know? Well, the uh, ground that, doesn't give like water does. <laughs> right, right. And yeah, this this felt fucking fantastic. Like, I was like looking out the window and I was like watching for it to like, you know, touch yep. down. And I was like seeing, you know, like the wake and everything like that. And I didn't even feel us touch down. I'm like, holy shit. Like, this guy's a damn pro. Cool. I, say, I, was, I was in the middle seat, so I couldn't even see the, the like floats of it. And I was like, all right, so when are we landing? And then we stopped. And I was like, "What? <laughs> what the fuck?" So you know, it was it was really good. It was be- honestly, yeah, best landing on yeah. a plane I've ever. Um, and then yeah, I mean, from that point on, you know, we just we filled up our water, bought uh, bought some fuel, and started hiking. The first day of hiking was pretty uneventful. Um, yeah, we did like twelve miles, I think thirteen miles. Twelve or um, thirteen, I think it was yeah over thirteen. But yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, ended up camping for the first night. Uh, Joseph almost absolutely burned my skin, uh, on my feet to a crisp, uh, with his, <laughs> with his nice little fancy alcohol stove. Um, that I made out of a beer can. That he made out of a beer can. Um, so if Joseph would have done that, I probably would have been pretty irritated the rest of the trip. Um, <laughs> good thing you're a goalie and you got those quick reflexes. Yeah, good thing. Too. Good thing I have cat-like reflexes. Uh, I was able to jump out of the way. Um, but yeah, and then Joseph and I pack rafted. We inflated our pack rafts. Um, so, I mean, I'm guessing that everybody knows what a pack raft is that's listening, but it's basically an inflatable kayak that you can take backpacking with you. Uh and so Joseph rented one and I built one and we decided to take it out on to Lake Desor, which is the, the lake that we're going to be uh, paddling across the next morning to basically bridge the two main trails that go on Isle Royal together and kind of make like a hybrid loop sort of deal. Um, except we, we go out and we visit this like tiny ass island. And like when I say tiny, I mean like it's probably like what? It's probably like 10 yards by like 30 yards, maybe. Mm, most. Yeah, like it's and it's like no like it's a, probably like a mile paddle, uh, maybe three quarters of a mile paddle. So like if somebody's swimming to that, they would have to be a pretty strong swimmer. Uh, so like no, like I would bet like that nobody's probably been there in a long ass time. Uh, and you know we beach it there, and we just like kind of wanted to say like that we like stood on this island, you know, made mm-hmm. landfall. We plundered the booty on that <laughs> island, and <laughs> then we found this egg. This like mysterious, very large brown with dark brown speckles on it, egg, uh, just chilling on the rocks. And like not in a nest, just sitting on the rock. Yeah, get a picture and, of it. Yeah, yes. we did get a picture of it. Uh, and we're just like, man, like what the hell could this possibly be? Like you know, like we were like speculating. Oh, is it a loon's egg? Is it blah 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 blah? Um, and you know, we ended up getting our answer on the final day of the hike uh, when we visited the the ranger station, but. I'll leave that for the very end. No spoilers. Yeah. Uh, so then, you know, we paddle back, blah, blah, blah. We, we go and we tent camp. And then we we wake up in the morning, eat our oatmeal. 
uh, first day <laughs> of oatmeal. First, first day of oatmeal. The first day Certainly of oatmeal. not the last. It was it was still uh you know taste wasn't too bad at that point, and Joseph and I walked down to the water, inflate our pack rafts, and the lake this morning was just dead still. It was literally glass, and it was just blanketed in a dense fog covering. Uh, it was like, glass up until the wall of fog. Yeah. So uh, we couldn't see past the fog, but it, where we were, it was it was It smooth, was, it was very glass-like. Um, and yeah, so we, we, we blow our pack crafts up, and like my dad like takes a few pictures um, you know, of us like going off into the abyss. Uh, <clears throat> but this paddle <clears throat> going across the lake is a mile and a half long. Uh, so once we got out to like the middle of like the paddle, we literally couldn't see anything. It was just fog all Dude, around us. Dude, that's scary. That is scary. Because like you lose your trip. direction. Like, and oh I mean, my God. there's nothing to orient you on. Nothing. I would hate to be your dad in this situation. I would be losing my mind. Back yeah, because right now my my dad is going and he's hiking alone, and then Joseph and I are like, you know, fucking off and doing this other thing, and he's oh like, who knows if they'll make it? Who knows? Luckily, we're <laughs> you, staying at the si- we're meeting at the same campsite that night. So it was like, I'll know if they make it tonight, you yeah. know, kind of deal. Yeah. That is so nerve wracking. Oh my yeah. God. Uh, so, I mean, luckily I had, I had every single campsite marked. So I knew on my GPS, uh, on like my watch, I knew where we had to be going, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so paddling across in the fog wasn't that big of a deal. Cause I knew, I knew like that I had to orient myself in like such like, you know, orientation, right. uh, and paddle for like so long. Um, but yeah, I think that paddle took us like maybe like an hour, I think probably like close, that. probably close to an hour. Um, we went cause once we got a ways in the wind picked up, so yeah. we got and then it pushed started, off course. Yeah. It started blowing us away from the target, which like in mm. pack rafts, the wind is like really fucking hard to deal with. Cause like you don't have any draft, so you can't really hold a line. Mm-hmm. And then also because you're higher up off the water, the wind affects you a lot more. Right, right. Uh, so it's kind of a pain in the ass, but yeah, we ended up we ended up uh, you know beaching it over on North Lake Desor. The previous night we were staying at South Lake Desor, and then I think we kind of scare this one guy. Uh, well, we scared the shit out of him. I mean, you yeah. landed first, so I didn't really see him. Yeah, yeah. So like, so like I I land okay, and so my pack raft it in the water it looks like a giant banana. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it literally looks like I'm sitting in a giant banana. Uh, so like you know I paddle up and you know I beach it and then this guy was like going to like fill up with water or something like that he's like he's like man I didn't expect to see anybody at this campsite let alone paddling in <laughs> and like I mean it was probably like well like 9 a.m. maybe like oh 10, 10 a.m. Yeah. I'm just I'm just picturing this dude he wakes up he's getting ready for the day he just goes let me fill up my water and then out of the fog comes a giant banana yeah. <laughs> hey guy how's it going yeah <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh my god. And yeah, and then you know, I talk with him for a little bit. Uh and you know, Joseph and I are just kind of like relaxing after the paddle cuz like, I don't know, we only had like not 8 or 9 miles to hike that day. So like it wasn't going to be bad whatsoever. And you know what? we hiked like 12 miles. It was ju- almost as long as the first day. Oh, okay. Well, I might just we had be, five... I might be sandbagging it, I don't know. You, yeah, you are. I'm noticing we... <laughs> Aiden constantly undercutting the amount of miles they're doing. <laughs> we had five, five miles of the Minong, six miles of that whatever bridge way, and then a half a mile at least from that point to the campsite. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. I was I was sandbagging it. You um, hiked like six miles in the rain, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we we like deflate our kayaks, our pack rafts, roll them up, stick them stick them on our packs, um, and then we start hiking. And yeah, like the five miles that Joseph talked about was on the Minong Ridge, and it's like the hardest five miles uh, on Isle Royal, but it's also like the most beautiful and just like most rewarding. Uh, it's just like it was so much fun. And, I loved it. It was great. Yeah, you're basically just like walking on a ridge line, and there's like there's no really there's no real trail uh, for most of it. You just kind of have to follow like rock piles. Uh, wow. And that was that was like really fun. That was basically like 
so on the second day, I had basically fulfilled everything that I wanted to do on that trip. I wanted to pack raft across that lake, and I wanted to do that section again. So mm-hmm. I did it. After the second day, I was like, I don't, I don't give a shit what we do for the rest of these four days. <laughs> I'm <laughs> um, done. And and then, as Joseph also hinted about them, once we did that, then we had another six miles uh, to do uh, to kind of like because we stopped at lunch. We stopped for lunch at the end of those five. Yeah, and I remember you saying, "Does that sound like thunder?" I'm like, "Nah, it's probably the seaplane." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So then it was not the seaplane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then, uh, you know, we were going a little bit, or we kept on going, and then I'm just like, you know, Joseph, I think that's actually thunder uh, that I'm hearing. I and, remember you saying that the pressure was dropping, and then the wind uh, started whipping, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I could, no!" I could hear the, I could hear the, yeah, the the wind pick up, and then I was looking at Please my. Please tell watch me you like, said winds howling. <laughs> I, I probably did. I said a lot of bullshit. <laughs> it um, smells like rain. But yeah, so then yeah, I was watching my barometer on my watch, and yeah, pressure was dropping. I'm just like, I don't know about this. I think we're about to get rained on, Joseph. And then, you know, we, we keep on hiking like another like 30, 45 minutes. And then it just starts absolutely downpouring on us. Mm. And we're just like, son of a bitch. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, it's always the first 20 minutes of a hike where it's like, of hiking in the rain, that's the worst. Because it's the process yeah. of getting wet that is, that is very unbearable. Um, yeah. And it's just, after that, then we were just kind of like, we were just soaked. You just um, accept it, yeah. And Once your shoes are soaked, your underwear is soaked, and your hair is just completely drenched, it's like, well, they can't get worse. I can't get more wet. Right, yeah. right. So, so, yeah, so then we were hiking in the rain, I don't know, for probably like two or three hours at that point. And and then we hit the hit the connector uh, that would lead, lead us back to, like, the main trail. Uh, I don't remember anything really on that section of trail. Oh, we did see two moot. Two moose, we one did, moose. Yeah, we saw two moose we saw that two day. Moose. Yeah, we saw two in the moose rain, so we couldn't we couldn't really take pictures because like it's downpouring. So I don't want to get my phone. I don't want to dig into my pack mm-hmm. because yeah. I put it, my phone away so it wouldn't get wet. Right. I don't want to dig in to fucking take a Thank picture. You. Is your is your dad doing a different trail this time? He yeah, was yeah, he's right? yeah. So he was hiking the other main trail, going to the same right, campsite yeah. as we were, but we had to basically take we had to like take the other trail and then uh, jog back to right. get to that campsite uh so then we ended up meeting up with him uh thankfully he had a campsite there early because all the campsites were full that night mm-hmm. um and yeah and then we my dad was like yeah like my feet are kind of bothering me so then we had to adjust our our plan for uh the next i guess four two well the rest two of days. the trip yeah pretty much the rest of the trip but i mean like I had a trail map with me. I knew like roughly the distances between all the campsites and stuff like that. So we, we drafted up a new, a new like backpacking plan. Um, the next day, I think we only did like, what was it? We Are backtracked you... the six miles. That yeah, was, was all we did. The six, the six miles. We backtracked what we did the previous day. Um, again, again, in the, in the rain, rain too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it rained again. So it's like, we hiked this once in the rain. We're hiking it again in the rain. The trail's cursed, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> yeah, and then we we got to the campsite that we were that we had like stopped for lunch at pretty much, um, right. right on Lake Superior, absolutely gorgeous campsite. We get there at like noon, uh, and the sun's coming out at this point. Sun's too. coming out, and it's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, so we we set up camp, you know, dry everything out. It, it that's, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, man, this looks like a freaking hobo village or something like that <laughs> and then joseph how did how did we end up come that was the night that we said that like king, that was rat. When we came, king rat so how i remember it is we got there and we pretty much so there's was there three sites there three or uh, four there's four so we get there and there's four sites it's noon no one's there people you know are out by 10 30 at the latest and usually don't come in until after three o'clock. It, it varies, but you yeah, know, yeah. this is this is a trail that or a site that you have to take the harder trail to get to. Mm-hmm. So it's not high trafficked. That's right. there's not a lot of short ways to get there. So and we booked it too. I mean, we we're, we're we're hiking pretty it. quick. So we're the first ones there. And Dayton's like, I'm gonna go check out the other sites 
make sure the one that we walk to first is worth it, you know, because a good one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so he takes his pack off and just books it down the trail between sites. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm I'm committed here. Like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> and then he just like jumps over some bushes and goes, this is the King Rat site. <laughs> and I'm like, what? He goes, this is this is King Rat shit. This is where we're <laughs> So then we started calling anything good the King Rat shit. King Rat shit. Um, yeah. And then that campsite was absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Uh, and then we mm-hmm. proceeded to spend pretty much the rest of the day uh, just laying out in the sun, uh, avoiding the, the biting flies, and mm-hmm. throwing rocks, skipping rocks, and hitting rocks with pieces of driftwood. Um, <laughs> it was honestly a lot of fun. Really, <laughs> the three staples of any of any camping trip, right? There. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then yeah, yeah, we we had like four pieces of driftwood, roughly the size of a bat, and mm-hmm. we were testing them to see how far we could hit each one. And... Dude, I could zing some of those rocks. <laughs> they were fucking going. <laughs> I I hit one like really weirdly one time. And it, and it literally, like, made a zinging noise as it went off. I think because, like, the rotation of the rock was like, zoom. It was wild. Uh, That's hilarious. I'd what? say we spent at least three hours hucking rocks. <laughs> oh, oh, easily. <laughs> that easily. Day. Easily, yeah. Um, Climbed out to watch the sunset. Yep. Climbed out along the shore. That was, a really, that was a really cool hike that we did. It was a cool hike. Uh, just like a short, like I don't know, probably quarter mile through the woods, yeah. right on the right on the shores of Lake Michigan or Lake Superior, rather. Um, uh, border bouldered across some rocks mm-hmm. a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then yeah, then the next day we hiked that the same. We backtracked again the same five miles of the Minong, which were the hardest. Um, my dad really enjoyed that. I mean, I really enjoyed it still. Um, it, it was just as cool the second time. Just yeah. as cool, yep. Um, and then stayed yeah, we, at the same site that we landed at. Yep. Uh, when we paddled over, so that was kind of neat. Yep. Um, um, I don't. Oh, and then oh, and then we got we got in again super early, oh like God. noon or something like this. <laughs> yeah. Just and then stupid early. And then I was like, well, what, what the fuck are we gonna do today? Like we got all day and we don't have any rocks to throw because it's an inland lake. <laughs> Uh, yeah. so then, that so was my then, entire plan was rocks. Bro. Yeah, yeah. So this this inland lake that we were that we were uh, camping on, uh, there's two more islands that are significantly bigger than the first one that we had paddled out to. And, uh, you know, I was like, hey, like we can go paddle out there. Like my watch says that it's only like, maybe like a mile and a quarter away. Uh, no, no, it would have been a mile and a quarter round trip. Uh, so you told me three quarters when we left. Yeah, yeah. My, I think it was a mile and a half round trip. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't that far of a paddle but like i was getting out there and i was like i don't know this like the wind is pretty strong right now and these waves are actually pretty significant for little inflatable boats uh (laughs) yeah they're they're white caps uh and at one point i encountered some three foot rollers uh which were not fun to go on um but yeah so like we ended up paddling across in this in this weather and for for reference like I would say my my pack rafting kit was considerably more formidable than Joseph's. Um, yes. Both both in like the like the waves that I could take on and my paddle. Uh, so my paddle is just my paddle skook him, uh, and my boat is just bigger than his. Um, my paddle was chooched. Yeah, his, <laughs> his paddle his paddle like sucked. Uh, so it was garbage. Like, and like I get out there and I'm like halfway across and I'm like I'm just like. I fucking hate this. I want this to be done with. But like, I was like, I told myself I'm going to do this. So I'm going to do it. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> so I'm just like, I'm just like hate paddling. Right. Like I'm just like, <laughs> <sighs> just like digging, digging deep. Uh, and I'm just like, Joseph, don't hate me for this, but I'm just going to get here as fast as fucking possible. Uh, this was about the time I yelled across to him. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm going to turn around. Cause this sucks. Mm-hmm. But he was so far ahead that he could not hear me. Yeah. So I just powered through it. I was like, fuck it. You know oh, what? No. If I die, I die. Yeah. Yeah. So then so then I, I beach it. I beach it on this on this uh this island. So for reference, okay. So Lake Superior, and then there's Isle Royal, which is an island, and then there's an mm-hmm. inland lake on this island, which is on a lake. 
and then there's an island on that. So that's what okay. we were doing. So it's like islandception, pretty much like Russian mm-hmm. nesting dolls of islands. Uh, and you know, I paddle out there, get there, beach it, find a good place that's like kind of like a haven from like the wind. Uh, and I, I don't know, I'm waiting there probably like I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes for Joseph to paddle across. Oh, no. <laughs> and you know, I'm like, I'm like taking like pictures of Joseph as he's coming in, and in the first, the first word, livid. first word that comes out of his mouth is fuck. And then the second, the second word, I was expecting it to be you, uh, but it wasn't. It was this, and I was just, I was like, I was like, hey, you know, what? if you were gonna say fuck you, I was gonna be like, hey man, you could have turned around whenever. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so we ended up getting out there and we like explored the island a little bit. There was a whole bunch of very fresh, uh, like moose shit, and also like tracks and stuff. And yeah, they're gonna say very fresh berries. Or, you know, something <laughs> something no. nice. No. You know, that means um, a moose fucking swam out there within the last couple days. Yeah, and yeah. I was and I was like, man, I do not want to be trapped on this pretty small island with a moose. Uh, moose are like, scary. That's I'll like fuck the you up. that's like the yeah. last thing that I want to do. What um, are we like? You can't run from it. You're trapped on this shitty island. It can yeah. outswim no, and they can, you. It can run like thirty miles an hour. Mm-hmm. I mean, granted, it's pretty it's heavily forested, so yeah. like it would, no still, away. still did not want to be yeah. there. Yeah, uh, so I was like, "Yep, nope, not not a uh, not going any further. I don't want to. I don't want to spook a moose out here." So then, you know, we we turned back, ate some lunch, uh, and then began our paddle back. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> the paddle back wasn't any different. Okay, I got <laughs> out there. The paddle back was better because I knew what to expect. Yeah, yeah, but I you think... guys are probably gassed at this point. Well, yeah. I don't know. I, so lunch. I tracked it. I tracked it on my watch, and I was only a three-minute difference between the two. Yeah. So it wasn't that bad. On the way there, I had about a liter of water that came over the bow into my pack raft yeah. that I dumped yeah. out. And there was, I don't know, three quarters of a liter on the way back. So yeah. I improved. Okay. Improving. Improving. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, so then we got back, and then we you know did the whole did the whole eating thing, did the whole sleeping thing. Um, As you do as you do and then next day we go and we hike to another uh campsite that is right on on lake michigan or lake why do i keep on saying lake michigan lake <laughs> superior um and it's on like this nice little cove uh super nice campsite like in the woods a little bit uh we got you know. lost on the way there because of the beaver dams oh yeah 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 so the first time that i went up to isle royal alone I got lost in some beaver dams because like they just like dam up and it turns into like the like swamp area and you cannot mm. tell where the trail is going. Uh, so the first time I was out there, I got completely lost, completely off trail, uh, and then had to hike up two ridge lines up probably, I don't know, 200 feet up this densely vegetated ridge. Uh, and I was like, man, I really hope I don't have to do that again this time. Um, so... <laughs> Spoiler, he did. <laughs> uh, not quite, not quite. We did get lost at a beaver dam. I don't think it was the same beaver dam. Uh, but then, yeah. you know, we were, we were smart enough. I had other people uh, with me to, to tell me, Dayton, you're being stupid. Don't be so hard-headed about this. Maybe well, this we're isn't looking the right at way. The, <laughs> we're looking in front of us, and there's plenty of footprints. So we're like, this must be the way. Yeah. And then we got a ways, and, like, the footprints are ending. Like, there's no mm-hmm. way so we get back to where we saw the footprints and there were like blazes like ribbons in the trees just right there it's like oh if we had looked to the right we would have known that the trail goes off and yeah yeah so we were a little Uh, pissed about that but it wasn't too bad yeah uh yeah and then so we we hiked out there um and you know hiked over more beaver dams and they have a lot of like these are really like cool like walkways that they make out of like basically like i don't know like two by eights three by eights or something like that um yeah. and those are really cool because they basically go over all the swamps and all the beaver dam areas and stuff like that um the ranger makes them not the beavers yes yeah <laughs> yes the beavers, the beavers two by eights. Blank <laughs> out these boards for us <laughs> yes. set them up you know four feet off the swamp and yeah, yeah. great craftsmanship yeah you know yep uh and then yeah camp there did the whole did the whole thing did some laundry in Lake Superior, swam in Lake Superior, uh, sunbathed because it was kind of chilly it was that night. So cold that day. Yeah, that was the day you wore your uh, your sleeping pad as a skirt. 
Yep, I did. <laughs> to keep warm because none of us had pants with us. We my only dad had shorts. Did. My dad. Your, your dad, dad did. But the two of us didn't. I didn't. I didn't want to bring them. <laughs> yeah, extra weight, man. It is. It is. You don't get the title of of least least weight in your pack without making sacrifices like that. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, or most weight. <laughs> um yeah and then the next morning hiked out uh hiked to windigo which is where we flew into the first day real short uh hike that day was like four yeah like three or four miles yeah um really easy and we ended up getting a shelter uh that night which is basically just like a wooden cabin that is just like it's just flat like wooden flooring on it with like screen on the front so like you don't have to like worry about setting up a a tent or anything um nice. and then once we had claimed that shelter we went into into the ranger station uh and bought some beer and at price too that it was yeah. not marked up hardly at, we bought yeah. budweiser for a do, like a can of budweiser for a dollar 15 yeah very nice and i was expecting to pay like four dollars for yeah. this yeah, but so, uh, I don't care about the beer. I care about the egg. What was the identity of the egg? Well, no, that happens tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, okay. Um, so I don't. I don't. What did we end up even do? Oh, we kind of chilled on the dock for a little bit we, too. It was a we really chilled on the dock. Day. We hammered out four beers that evening. Yeah, and we saw the moose. We did. We, we, yeah, there's we saw moose. this moose. So the campsite was right on this creek. Well. Creek River. It was mm-hmm. called Washington Creek, but it was probably what 15, 20 feet across. No, dude, so, dude, no, come on. It was way bigger than that. It was at least probably twenty yards across. All right. So what I'm learning tonight is Dane's underestimate the amount they hike, and just under- underestimate just distance in general. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a wide <laughs> creek. I would not call it a creek by any means. But no. anyway. Anyway. We hear in this crashing upstream meanwhile i'm and sunbathing i'm was... sunbathing yeah, right just by the in the sun Dane's right on ass the naked yeah. <laughs> damn near and i thought it was some people like white whitewater or like rafting you know down it like whatever like we're close enough to the dock like we're near day hikers so like maybe people like brought a inflatable raft and are like paddling yeah, yeah. down it you know whatever and then i look and there's just this fucking moose like Mm -hmm. just blasting down this river and Dayton like sits up like what the hell is that and just (laughs) jumps up yeah it's like I don't blame him I was not like nearly that close and I was just like (laughs) backing up too but it was just funny to watch him like jump up and like (laughs) shit there's just this moose and then it just stopped right in front of us yeah it was like eating shit oh my god yeah it was was crazy yeah I don't fuck with meese no I didn't mooses I did not want to get trampled by one of those. Um, yeah, and then, you know, next morning, packed everything up. Packs we basically were... just waited until it was time to go to bed. Yeah. That's <laughs> all we yeah. did yeah. at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah, packed it up. Uh, and then, you know, on our on our morning before, like, you know, we had to, like, go to the dock at, like, such and such time. Um, but we had to go to, like, the ranger station to, like, basically give our registration back to them basically mm-hmm. telling them that we didn't die that we completed yep. our hike uh and mm-hmm. then while i was in there i was like hey like by the way do you know what like this egg is and i and i had joseph show him a picture of the egg and it turns out that it's a sandhill crane egg uh Dang. which we did see sandhill cranes on the island um mm-hmm. except we had them look up like what time like their incub or like how long their incubation and like what their like nesting period is and mm-hmm. they're supposed to be hatched by like may i think Oh, okay. um, it was like end egg. of May, early June, usually. Yeah, so the, that 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 egg had been abandoned. Um, yeah. So it wouldn't have mattered if we like picked it up or anything like that. But yeah, so Sandhill Crane egg. This egg was pretty massive too. Like it was. That's really cool. Yeah, it was. It was pretty yeah. big. Um, <sighs> Roughly a baseball size. Yeah, it was you like know, a you, baseball if size took... if you kind of like made it oblong. If you made right. a baseball into an egg shape, roughly that big. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, that's it was not a small egg. Um, yeah. yeah. So then you and then flew back and met up with Gabe. Flew back. Uh, yeah, met up with Gabe that morning at Fifth and Elm. Inhaled those breakfast burritos yeah. at Fifth and Elm. Yep. 
Um, absolutely just, yeah, housed that shit. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and then we, we went up and mountain biked uh, up in Copper Harbor. Um, yeah, I know you listed an episode last week. Do you want to add anything from your side of things, Dave? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I was happy with how I how I biked. I didn't think that I was out of shape or anything like that, so that was nice. nice. Um, yeah, that, well, that's a huge relief that I don't have to talk about Copper Harbor because I really did not want to. Well, we're also <laughs> getting long on time, so. I know, I know. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, yeah, and then my finally into my weekly anecdotes, okay? Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll skip I'll skip forward to all. I kind of always want the car update, from being honest. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, because we landed, get... and you checked your phone, and you did not have a missed call from the uh, the auto shop. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah. So I I get a call on I think like the morning, maybe like the day before I'm supposed to leave, uh, uh, Houghton to go back down to Holland. And, you know, I call them back and they're like, hey, like your car is ready, um, ready to be, like be picked up whenever. Uh, so I'm like, OK, no problem. Like it'll be like another week until I'm, I'm back into into Connecticut. And uh, spoiler alert, it's going to be longer than a week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so then I, I call them back and I'm like, all right, like, cool. Like how much is this? How much is going to like set me back? And like, oh, you know, it's going to be thirty four hundred bucks in cash. And I was like, all right. No problem. Like I can, I can make in that cash. Work. Okay. Well, they said thirty four hundred dollars in cash or like thirty six something with credit mm. card. And I'm like, uh, fuck Got that. You. Like, there is no way that I'm gonna pay two hundred and like fifty dollars more just to pay with my credit card. Right. Um. Yeah. But yeah, son. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. I picked it up. Yep. No problems. Car works pretty well right now. Um. It definitely. <laughs> pretty definitely, well. Yeah. I, I've only driven it like ten miles since I've picked it up. Cause I've been riding my motorcycle everywhere. Um, but yeah, so when I was home, I had a friend's wedding. Uh, that was really fun. Um, did some hiking and helped my dad paint the exterior of the house. So I had to get, you know, acquainted with being up in heights again, uh, being up on extension ladders, you know, like probably like 20, 25 feet up in the air. Is that um, a, was that an issue for you in the past? No, but it was just like, I haven't done it in like forever. So I just had right, to, right you know get reacquainted with it um they're not the most stable usually no so. no they aren't they aren't and especially while you're holding you know a paintbrush and then a tray of paint as well so you don't <laughs> right, even, right. you're not holding on to anything um <laughs> and then yeah so then on on saturday i get this notification on my phone and it's like oh like there's a there's a hurricane that's about to like literally just stomp your your town that you're living in like it's literally supposed to make landfall in the town that i'm living in in Groton. Mm -hmm. uh and i'm just like all right well son of a bitch i really hope that i can at least make it home on on sunday uh and then not like probably like an hour later they're like oh your flight's been canceled and i'm just like mm -hmm. son of a bitch like are you kidding me right now uh so then you know managed to get it rescheduled uh rescheduled it for tuesday so i have to burn another two days of pto and mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of chilling at home, you know, doing my thing, grinding up Pokemon like it's nobody's business. <laughs> and, <laughs> and and then on Tuesday, drive to the airport, yada, 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 uh, layover in Chicago, board my plane just fine. And they're like, you know what, It's we have like a 10-minute weather delay. And I'm like, oh, gosh, really? Are you serious? Uh, so sit through this 10 quote unquote 10 minute weather delay uh mm -hmm. and then you know 30 minutes go by and the captain gets back on the intercom and he's like yeah uh, this weather is like not cooperating with us it's going to be like another like 45 minutes meanwhile we are still sitting in the airplane yeah uh, and i am just like all right i mean like at this point i was still grinding up pokemon like i was a one track mind uh <laughs> <laughs> dude i was trying to i was trying to i was trying to get a tyranitar okay i had been mm -hmm. grinding out this fucking larvitar for like 40 levels uh on, you know, this air, on this airplane and so then after after like those additional 45 minutes go by this you know the captain gets back in the intercom he's like yeah like we're, we're still not able to take off we're gonna let people off into the terminal uh to oh. like get some like food get some drinks whatever uh so fucking minutes they, ago. they they start they start you know letting people off the plane and they uh, and then like probably like 30 another 30 or 45 minutes go by and he's like all right weather's starting to shape up we're gonna start like calling people back onto the plane 
uh, pretty much everybody gets onto the plane and then like after like 10 minutes it's like all right we're still missing two people uh, but you know we're gonna we're gonna be like trying to get them onto the plane as fast as possible it literally took those two people like 20 more minutes to get onto the plane Ugh, and we're just God. like everybody on the plane like when he said that everybody was like oh my god like like leave without him i know <laughs> it, it was bullshit uh so at this point i think we were taking off from chicago at about like 9 45 p.m uh which no maybe it was like 9 30 i think it was 9 30 um anyway yeah no it was 9 45 uh so then take off you know uneventful flight really no turbulence whatsoever but what that means is that i landed in groton at, at uh, 1 a.m. Mm-hmm. So it, it was it was just absolute bullshit, right? Because my car was still broken. Remember this. So my mm-hmm. friend, my friend who was supposed to be picking me up at 9.45 p.m. now has to pick me up at 1 a.m. on yep. a work oh. night. Uh, yep. So, you know, bless his heart, honestly, dude. Like, I don't know what I would do without him. Uh, I probably would still be up in fucking Hartford. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, so he picks me up at 1 a.m., uh, you know, like we're both just like delirious at this point. It's like 2 a.m. by the time we roll into Groton, and and it's just like, oh my gosh, like it, it's some fucking bullshit. And then I wake up at like 8 a.m. Uh, Connor doesn't even sleep that night. He just pulls an all nighter and through. just goes yeah. goes into work. But I I sleep for like six hours and work from home that day. Um, and then that leads to today, uh, and I'm still all fucked up from like the. Uh, from like the flying aspect of it yeah. and i missed my alarm this morning and i woke up at 8 a.m and i was supposed to be in the office and i usually get into work at seven uh <laughs> so i was just like I was, I was like fucking sprinting around this morning and got into work i literally woke up at 7 56 and i got into work by like 8 30 uh which yeah. is pretty damn impressive i think uh but yeah that's that's my update my my quote unquote <laughs> short update. Uh, hey, I wanted to hear all of it, uh, and I do have one last question I need to ask. Uh huh. We talk about on the podcast or off the podcast, but we were mentioned a competition between Joseph and your dad. Yes. On who was the faster hiker, who who took the the victory there? Uh, I don't know. They I would say they both they both held their weight pretty well. Um, they I mean. Each of them had like a few like issues, like Joseph's ankles were bothering him for a little bit. I had bit. some ankle problems. My so my man. dad's feet were bothering him a little bit, um, and actually by the end of the hike, my shoes had gotten just so blown out because uh, yeah. at this point I think they had well over four hundred miles on them, um, and my like Achilles tendon was like taking a lot of the load because my insole was just shot. Um, so like we were all kind of like beaten up, but I mean none of us really had any issues doing the hiking that we wanted to so i was i was really happy with that honestly like if we had to like i don't know take like a complete rest day i think i probably would have been a little bit miffed but yeah that would have been kind of miserable if we i mean i would have done it if because mm-hmm. we needed to but it would have been rough for yeah. sure yeah even the like four hours of downtime that we had at most was like fucking end me i want to (laughs) eat dinner now even though it's 3 p.m so i can go to those calories yeah Mm. it's not even that i want to go to bed like i want to if i'm at least asleep i don't notice the time yeah i won't be bored yeah 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 well i'm really happy you guys had a good trip glad you're back safely and uh you know hopefully you're all rested up for the next one (laughs) yeah Uh, Mm mm-hmm but yeah, thanks everyone for listening to this episode of the podcast. Um, as always, you can find our show on Mondays on YouTube and podcast services. Follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitch. But until next time, thanks for watching. Bye. 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 See ya.